And the topic of the title or the name of the speech is No Soup for You. So with No Soup for You, here is David <laughs> Ken. AB 376. It's like that soup Nazi in the Seinfeld episode. No soup for you. That's what I'm going to be talking to you about today. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak in front of your committee about this very important topic, which you will be voting on in 10 days from now. You've decided that you need more comments from the from outside and need more consideration for this very important vote for it to get out of the Senate Appropriations Committee to get into the Senate onto the Senate floor. So I'll speak about what the problem is, which I know you're familiar with, and then I'll present a solution and how it will work. The current state of shark fishing is simply unsustainable. And I think we all agree about that. that. Something needs to be done. That's why this bill has passed in the House of Representatives by a large margin already. And now it is in the State Senate. <coughs> Nearly 90% of some shark species are depleted from the ocean. Most have seen at least a 70% decline in their populations. Sharks take many years to reach maturity for them to be able to reproduce. They're an apex species, which means they're a crucial part of the ocean's ecosystem. If you take away the apex creature, then, then the balance of the oceans would be wrong. Different fish may become more and more populous and then throw the whole thing out of whack. I believe that Paul Watson of Sea Shepherd Society, Conservation Society, has said that if we kill our oceans, we kill ourselves. Well, many countries have realized the problems facing the sharks, and they have actually banned the fishing of sharks off their coasts. However, most sharks are pelagic sharks, which means that they swim into the entire ocean, which means that these bands just along the coastlines are really not going to have too much effect. That's why AB 376, which bans the import and the sale and possession of Shark fins in California is so important that we must pass this bill. Now, this seemingly simple solution has been subject of some discussions recently, especially by one of the committee members and my state council, uh, state senator, Ted Lieu. May I have the line four? May I have the line four? Ted Lieu and Democratic <coughs> Assemblymen, they have argued in the past that a ban would disproportionately affect Chinese communities. Lou says that allowing restaurants to serve sharks, steak sharks, sorry, shark steaks in Beverly Hills while banning shark fin soup in Monterey Park is discrimination. However, other Chinese assembly people think that shark extinction is a real threat and that shark finning is cruel. So I'd like to address uh, the committee members' comments and, and concerns about this. And first, I would like to go back and, and acknowledge the fact that, that shark fin soup does date back to China's Ming Dynasty. I'm not really sure when that is, but I know that was a long time ago. <laughs> However, shark fins, we didn't have the mechanisms to catch a lot of shark fin soup, uh, shark fins in order to make the soup, so it was very rarely eaten, and it was very expensive back then, too. They say that emperors used to love this because they thought it was just so rare, and it's of the powerful shark, and it symbolized a lot of things, and they, they said it was delicious and other sorts of things too. They usually served it during weddings, banquets, and other important business deals. This is a traditional thing. Today, when you if people were to serve shark fin soup, often at weddings, other times, it symbolizes that you are doing well enough to to serve this thing, scrub it as a status symbol in the Chinese culture. And shark fins, when you, we talk about shark fins, of course, uh, I never realize all you committee members are well known. That it corresponds, it's basically all the shark, the fins of the shark that help it maneuver in the water, which are the pectoral fins and the dorsal fin, which we see sticking out of the water in the jaws in those types of movies. Well, I'd like to talk about assembly member, I should say, State Senator Ted Lieu's concern about discrimination. And I think that we do need to be worried about discriminating against societies and cultural practices. As a single white male, Born in the United States, I have no idea what it feels like to be discriminated against, but I will talk about the definition of discrimination in Wikipedia and see how that bears on the issue. As sociologists would say, discrimination is the prejudicial treatment of an individual based on their membership in a certain group or category, as discrimination is the actual behavior towards members of another group. It involves excluding or restricting members of one group from opportunities that are, that are available to other groups. 
And this is, I think, the crux of where uh, committee member Liu's argument falls down, is that we're not saying that Chinese Americans can't eat shark fin soup, and everyone else can. We're saying that no one in California should be eating shark fin soup in order to save the sharks. So in that way, uh, and also I think that his statement about how people can eat their shark steaks in Beverly Hills and, and not the shark in the shark fins in Monterey Park, people will be still able to eat, to eat shark. We're not we're not banning the eating of shark. We're just simply banning the eating of shark fins. Now I think when we look at these discriminatory potential discriminatory effects, it does dis disproportionately affect Chinese communities. But I think we need to look at what a cultural tradition is at stake here. Because many cultures have traditions. Many have traditions on how to bury the dead. They have traditions on that are used in their spiritual, their, their religious ceremonies. This is a tradition which is simply has to do with showing wealth. It's more of a luxury kind of thing. We are people are eating, but they're not going to starve to death if you take away this shark fin, shark fin soup idea. So in this sense, just as Americans no longer throw rice at weddings, because that's a tradition that we found out was affecting birds in a very bad way, I think that if we balance out all the factors between the declining shark, spe uh, shark species in the ocean, the declining populations, and the fact that we might be banning the practice of eating shark fin soup here in the Chinese community, I'll just say that that balancing act favors the ban of the shark fins greatly outweighs the, the idea that we need to have shark fin soup in order to celebrate our weddings or whatnot. Now it suggests that if eating shark is very important to Chinese Americans, then they can still eat shark. They just can't eat the fin of the shark. So my suggestion is to take your shark fin soup and make it shark soup. And that way, it's a little bit different than it used to be. You don't have that tough cartilage of the, of the fin to eat through, but you're still getting the same idea of being the shark. I know in the, in the past, <laughs> I'm not speaking as a vegan, by the way. In the past, the symbolized, you know, you're eating, you're taking the shark fins, very important. You're still getting that same kind of idea, but you're, you're being more powerful by saying, I'm eating the shark, and I'm doing the right thing for the shark and their, and their species and their population. So I hope you vote for the sharks. Eat the sharks, not their fins. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and as uh, and I do know that, that that when they cut the shark fins off, they just throw the shark back in the water to die, which is awful. And That's why correct. would they even That's do correct. that? When why would they even do that when there's actually a benefit monetarily for them to, to keep the meat? To keep the meat. I don't, I don't, I mean, I just, uh, I don't, a a, a ship full of shark that. fins costs you get a lot more money for that than a ship full of sharks. If you keep the shark, you can't put more shark fins on your ship. It takes up space. So each ship yeah. has a TAC, a quota. We also bring down the price of the rest of the meat. And so I think your question is well so, asked. In fact, Ted Lu suggested that. I think that is a way to kill the bill. I think that uh, people, just as they eat fish through the ocean, I think re responsible, I'm not speaking of David Rutan, by the way, I'm speaking, of, speaking to the committee here. Uh, responsible fishing uh, would include the taking of, of sharks as food. And by, by, just, by making sure that we don't take their fins, then that, that over, that, the fact that all these sharks are at the bottom of the ocean now without fins uh, will go away and will allow just as we over, overfish the fish, we'll overfish the shark also, and there'll be a, the same balance as we overfish the entire ocean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, next question, a woman in the white shirt. Uh, this would be <laughs> community member May. What's wrong with throwing rice at weddings? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very good question. Uh, I, I know that one. My understanding, I'll let the council member in the back uh, <laughs> answer that question for me. Um, because people say that um, rice is for weddings, that the rice will grow in their stomach and explode their stomach, which is actually not true. But people say it, and they think it's not safe anymore. Okay. 
Any, any more questions from the committee members? Uh, yes, Ms. Uh, Kim, no, committee member Golo. I guess I'm still a little confused about why it was okay to eat the shark and not the fin. Um, are you saying that if 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 they kept the entire carcass on the boat, it would take up more space, so then they would um, get less? That's that's right. You, you, you could you could kill right now. They're killing 10 million sharks a year uh, for their fins, I should say. Okay. And then, so in, in the place of that, they'd have to keep maybe only be able to kill one million sharks because okay. they take up so much more space on the boat. I suppose they could kill more entire sharks, but they can't use the fins anymore in California. Well, I move that we form a committee to look into <laughs> the ecosystem devastation from the killing of sharks in general. In general, I think that's a, that's a great yeah, idea. I am concerned. I am concerned though that, that, that by by forming a, <laughs> by forming a committee and, and adding amendments to the bill, which I'm trying to dissuade you of, that we'll we'll have a bill which is no longer passable, and it will be a, a, some sort of way that, that instead of banning shark fins, we will not ban for shark fins, and that the measure to ban shark eating of, of, uh, shark fish at all will fail, no. and it will end up with nothing. Oh, so no. my, my, my yeah. suggestion to you is just to keep the bill the way it is and, and just get, ban the shark fin, sale of shark fins in the California. By the way, two-thirds of the Chinese-American population in the United States is in Southern California. So technically, if the shark carcass is on the boat along with the fins of that shark, then fin soup could still be obtained at a very high premium. Right? That, that, that's correct, and so Council, then, member, Council Member Lou over here has, has, has thought about that as a possibility too, but I would find, as I mentioned in the Easy Reader today, when I was next to my sign I was holding up, which said, Ted, don't be a loser, ban shark fins. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned in that article, they would, that, would, that would create too much of a, if people can take the uh, sharks and, and also sail the fins, I think there would be a big illegal trade in shark fins in that case. And it would be hard to tell which fins came from sharks, whole sharks, or which fins came from ones that were simply taken off and, and the sharks discarded. Would there be like a government fee paid for shark fins turned in? If you have so much weight in shark meat, then you should have roughly so many fins, and you turn that into whoever's regulating. That's an interesting idea, too. That's a good idea. And certainly, I think right now, the bill is, is thinking about doing a $10,000 fine for being caught with the shark fins. One last question from our committee member in the back. Is, oh, sorry, um, the back. So is the main, uh, is the purpose to end the cruelty that is being uh, enacted on the sharks. Is that the reason? Because clearly the discrimination discrimination issue might um, disable this in some ways. So is it the cruelty we are addressing? We are addressing both the cruelty and, the, and more the fact that it's overfishing the oceans. I'm speaking again as state retainer the committee members. I think it's the cruelty of it. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the committee members that it's the imbalance of the oceans and, and the preservation of our oceans for further generations of Americans and other Chinese Americans even to, to eat, keep on eating fish. <laughs> so, then if you, so then if you were looking at, at, at the ecology as your, the, the premise of your argument, then at what point does the fishing for sharks in that create a greater imbalance to the ecology of the ocean versus shark fin creating Resulting in an imbalance to the ocean, and, and I think it's hard right. to separate the two. As our yeah. last question, I, I suggest that we ask uh, hit up uh, Mr. Gates for some money to, to research that and make sure that we have that balance uh, going at all times. All right, Mr. Master. Now we the actual vote for the speakers. So if you have your ballots, please write down. The speaker that you so the speech that you like the best, or the person who gave the speech that you like the best. Um, and we will have